My name is Mumsi Mutha. I'm a professor of systems biology and medicine at Harvard Medical School, and I'm also an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. I'm Navdeep Chandel. I'm a professor of medicine, biochemistry, and molecular genetics at the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern University. I'm thrilled to receive the Anne Lurie Prize this year with Dr. Mutha. I feel so honored to be receiving the Anne Lurie Prize. I'm deeply humbled. Dr. Chandel and I both share a passion for mitochondria and its role in uh, human disease. Biology is rooted in observations. Now, of course, then, after you make an observation, you have to use the logic and physical chemistry principles to figure out the mechanism of why that observation works the way it does. Mitochondria are semi-autonomous organelles that are found in all of our body cells that help to extract energy from the food that we eat and convert it into a chemical energy that then powers everything from growth to neurotransmission. That's why it's popularly known as the powerhouse of the cell. But what we've learned in the last 25 years is a whole new biology of mitochondria. This is a very, very complex organelle, so it really benefits from a lot of different approaches Approaches. And I think we've both had very parallel bodies of work that helped illuminate some basic aspects of the organelle as well as its role in disease. In a series of papers reported in 2016 and 2019, we discovered that if we simply dial down the ambient oxygen, we could now suppress disease in preclinical models of mitochondrial disease. And conversely, if we dialed up oxygen, it was a great way of making those organisms even more sick. So we think we have uncovered an extremely deep and profound interaction between mitochondria and environmental oxygen. We're now trying to harness hypoxia as a medicine for both rare and common forms of mitochondrial dysfunction. Also, for almost 20 years now, we applied new methods such as mass spectrometry, proteomics, and big data computational analysis to try to systematically identify all of the proteins that are made by the nuclear genome that then end up in mitochondria. So by using these methods over many, many years now, we've identified about 1,100 proteins that we call mitocarda. And these 1,100 proteins made by the nuclear genome work with the 13 that come from the mitochondrial DNA, and all of these have to work together to produce properly functioning mitochondria. This paradigm that I've worked on since the mid-90s now called mitochondria signaling organelles. Mitochondria release other things other than ATP, which make critical decisions for health. And if those signals are perturbed, then one idea is that that's why you get pathology. Maybe that's why you get neurodegeneration or you get too much inflammation. And so if we figured out some of those signals, others have figured out other types of signals, then we can figure out how those signals are generated and released and what their targets are and how those signals then change during a particular pathology. Then let's fix those signals and cure the pathology. So hence, I've sort of coined this mitochondria signaling organelles. So in some ways, mine is a reductionist approach. His is a maybe a systems approach. They're both complementary. And I use some of these systems approaches to figure out where to focus in, in an unbiased way. And he, of course, takes his systems when he wants to do mechanism and causality, he goes to the reductionist approach. So I think it's a, it's a nice sort of yin and yang. My real hope is that we can just continue doing this work we're always driven by just basic biology as well as by disease biology. I would love it if we can change the textbooks of biochemistry and also change the way that we practice clinical medicine. I'm hoping now that the concept of mitochondria signaling organelles is formally established in my lab and in many other labs, people are discovering these new signals coming from mitochondria beyond ATP and how those signals change in a given disease. And if we figure out how they change, maybe we can fix them to develop therapies. And that's what we're gonna try to do going forward. I really wanna thank the FNIH for honoring me. This really helps to recognize all of my mentors and all of my lab members. So by honoring this field, you're bringing a lot of attention to the science and medicine of mitochondria. I'm very thankful to receive the Anne Lurie Prize. You're only as good as the people in your lab, and this is bestowed upon the Chanda Lab collectively. This is a really exciting area that holds so much potential for all of biomedicine.